Thank you for coming this morning. Uh, I'm Glenn Martin, the Director of Development here at school. Um, I'm going to introduce Dr. Clyde Mextroff, who's the Chair of the Board at the King's Academy. He's going to welcome you all, and then we'll have uh, a pledge to our flag and a prayer by two of our students. Dr. Mextroff? Thank you, Glenn. It, it is an honor and a privilege to be here today and to welcome each and every one of you to this program. I'm really excited about this program. It, it is just an incredible opportunity for us to start a new and innovative program that is going to allow us to influence a whole generation and actually generations to come in uh, the conservative liberty principles that have founded our country and are so lacking in today's uh, conversation. If you just listen to the news and listen to politicians, they're, they're talking about things that really are scattered and, and really distracting and, and disconnected from where we need to be going. And so the opportunity to influence an old, another generation of, of students in such values, I think, is going to be essentially nation-changing for our country. And, and this is really exciting to me. And so I, I, thank, I want to thank all of you who are donors, those of you who are supporters, and those of you who are friends of the King's Academy and of this program. I, I thank you for being here. And I'd like to invite each of you to stand to your feet as two of our students come to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to our great flag and to our nation. candidacy for <laughs> some political office. But uh, anyway, thank you, Roe, for setting up such a nice uh, event for us today. I do want to welcome all of you to the King's Academy, um, and thank you for being here in what is a very major step for us forward with our Christian pre-law program. Um, before I get started, I would like to welcome a number of special guests that we have here today. We have some very great speakers here today. Uh, David Namo uh, from the Christian Legal Society. Uh, Saya Baker Barnes is the president of the Palm Beach County Bar Association, and we have Scott Hawkins, who's the past president of the Florida Bar. He's also past chair of Palm Beach Atlantic University, and I hear that he has just recently been selected as the chair for the law program at the University of Florida, so congratulations on that, Scott. Um, I'd also like to welcome the Honorable Judge Bradley Harper is here with us today. Um, Councilman Michael Drehas and Attorney Lori Cohen from the Village of Wellington. And also Tim Worley is here on behalf of Palm Beach Atlantic University. We also have some of our law students in the back. Our, um, some of them are going to be partic participating in moot court. Um, we also have our prefects here today, so thank you students for being here as well. You know, a year and a half we kind of stepped out on faith with this program. We had been thinking for quite a, quite a period of time about adding to um, our academic programs a pre-law program. But the one thing that we did not have was a Christian lawyer to really run the program. So I'm also happy to recognize today Denise Brown is here today and she's the director of our program and she's done a wonderful job. I'll speak more about her later. Um, one of the things that we wanted to create with this Christian law program was something that we think is unique in the United States 
Um, we were trying to create a, an American pre-law program at a distinctively Christian high school, merging biblical integration with legal expertise. And today I feel like God is blessing our efforts in this area with his provision uh, through the donations that we're going to announce today. And he's also validating our initiative in this area that I think he wants Christians to participate in the legal arena. So I'm very thankful for the generosity of the donors that uh, are anonymous, but we are recognizing their efforts here today um, that have stepped forward to endow this important academic program for the King's Academy. We share their commitment to liberty and justice, and we thank and applaud them for their vision uh, in endowing our program. Now, the King's Academy has made tremendous strides in the academic arena um, in the past few years under the capable leadership of Headmaster Doug Rains, our high school principal, Sonia Jones, and our elementary principal, Adam Miller. Under their leadership in recent years, our school has enjoyed a National Blue Ribbon School of Excellence Award, uh, one of only two private schools in Florida that year to receive the award, uh, a current 89% passing rate on the advanced placement tests that our students take. We have a growing dual enrollment uh, opportunity and relationship with Palm Beach Atlantic University that we're very grateful for. And we now have uh, developed academic tracks in the area of STEM, which is science, technology, and engineering, business, sports medicine, Christian ministry, aviation, and now Christian pre-law. Um, as I said, this program would not have gotten started without Denise's efforts. Um, two years ago, her husband, Kurt, emailed me and said that they were moving back from Pennsylvania to South Florida. I had the privilege of knowing Kurt and Denise since my college days at Poetch Atlantic. And so when I heard that, I thought, well, we might have a chance to start this pre-law program. It might be possible. I knew that uh, Denise was the kind of Christian attorney that we were looking for to run the program. She's a strong woman of faith. She's a lifelong student and practitioner of the law. She has an MBA, and she had prior teaching experience to boot. What I didn't know at the time was how invested she would become in this program and how much time and effort she'd be willing to invest in writing curriculum, mentoring our students, networking with the local legal community, which I'm so glad that many of you are here today. And she even has been taping and designing our upcoming online classes for the legal program. So Denise, Doug, Sonia, and Adam, thank you for going above and beyond to make Christ-centered academic excellence possible here at King's. As I said, I think that it's evident today that God's hand is on the King's Academy, and at first he was giving us a glimpse of what legal studies at the King's Academy could be all about, and now he's giving us a larger and larger vision for what this program can be at the King's Academy. Today's generous endowment will allow more rapid growth, uh, pace of growth here, We'll be moving from one instructor with several classes here in West Palm Beach to being able to have multiple instructors with a full curriculum of pre-law offerings. And as I said, we're developing an online platform to share this program with schools and homeschool students across the country and around the world. So we truly have much to celebrate here today. This Christian pre-law program checks all the boxes for the King's Academy, so I know that it will be strong for years to come. It's full of academic rigor, biblical integration, critical thinking, has a global impact, and we're all doing this, developing a passion in our students for justice and liberty, patriotism, and citizenship as well. So thank you for coming today to celebrate with us as we thank God for his provision, and we continue to ask for his guidance as we continue to develop the King's Academy's Christian Law Program in the classroom and online. You know, at the King's Academy, part of our mission statement says that we seek to graduate Christian leaders who seek to impact the world for the King of Kings. And so it's my prayer today that the, graduation, the graduates of this pre-law program would impact their world for Christ, that they would seek justice and liberty through the American legal system, and that they would be guided by two principles found in Proverbs 21. It talks about when justice is done, it brings joy to the righteous. It also brings fear to the unrighteous, but... Let's, let's say that it brings joy to the righteous. I also hope that they will <clears throat> listen to the exhortation in Galatians 5 that says, it was for freedom that Christ set us free, so therefore we need to keep standing firm in him. You see, at the King's Academy, we desire to have students that are both experts in their craft and also, most importantly, followers of our King. So may the Lord continue to bless our efforts to train up the next generation of Christian attorneys um, that are full of liberty and justice. And also, we need to also 
raise up the next generation of well-informed non-attorneys. So this program will be for both people seeking to enter the legal system and those that are just wanting to know more about their country and their constitution. We do all of this for his glory, so thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Randy, and thank you for your vision for thinking of this over so many years and then um, stepping out in faith to allow it to happen. Uh, it feels like just a few days ago we were celebrating the groundbreaking of the Boswell Science and Technology Center, uh, and if you came by that direction, you realize it's on schedule, it's on track, and uh, this coming summer we will open that, and in the next school year our students will be blessed by it. Um, and today we again get to celebrate God's goodness. It warms my heart to be able to simply give God the glory for the gifts that he has given and, and has generously provided for what we're doing. Um, discussions about last year's pilot program uh, led to these gifts, and, and the gifts will both allow us to move forward aggressively, maybe more aggressively than we otherwise would have, and also to, to know that when we complete the funding, it will be funded for 30, 40, 50 years into the future. It is going to be a program uh, that will quickly and long-term impact our world for Christ. The initial gift of a million dollars funds so many elements of the program for years, ensuring that we're able to retain attorneys with great skill and education like Denise to impact our students, ensuring we're able to invest in the technology and the equipment needed to develop in-class and online curricula providing resources to attract nationally known experts to our campus, uh, even providing for specific scholarships for students whose desire is to delve more deeply into the law and, and to earn a diploma designation when they graduate from the King's Academy. A further gift of $250,000 specifically allows us to focus on faculty development, both for sending faculty that we have and identify in the future to go out to learn and to grow, but also to bring others to our campus in order to better impact our faculty so that we can better impact our students. Uh, whether in making a mock trial team and club the best in the country or providing resources that broaden what is now a high school program into the middle school and even into the elementary school here at King's Academy. Uh, the donors built incentive in uh, as well to the program. They've given that $1.25 million. They've also said, hey, we will give you another million dollars once you raise some. And they created a matching incentive uh, that is both strategically designed for us to succeed uh, and also designed to bring more people into the fold of giving to this program. You'll hear more about that from me in the future, I'm sure. But just know um, that folks have said, we want this to happen. We want other people to be involved. They put their money where their mouth is, and we'll ask you to do so as well. Um, always got to be bold about that. We're so excited that this is a purely academic gift. We're in this Page Center for Performing Arts, which uh, built uh, a building, and we put uh, resources into our athletic program. We're building that science and technology center that are buildings. This is the first purely academic gift in the history of King's Academy from a, a major gift standpoint, and it is so encouraging to see those steps happen. We put out a strategic plan not too long ago that talked about uh, endowment, and I had no, when Randy mentioned the number associated with that, I thought to myself, I have no idea where that's coming from. And yet God then stepped in very quickly, quickly enough for me not to get depressed, and said, here we go. He is going to provide, all we gotta do is do the work, and I'm so appreciative of that. Um, now let me introduce Denise. Randy talked about her a bit, um, who is and will continue to lead the program. She's a uniquely qualified, both as an attorney, an MBA, and an educator to take this program to the next level and to do so for God's glory. So Denise, if you'd come give us details on the program. Good morning. Thank you, members of the bench and bar and special guests for joining us today as we celebrate all that God is doing here in the pre-law program at the King's Academy. I am grateful and excited for the enthusiasm this program has generated, not just among students, not just here on campus, but in the local and national legal community as well. For those of you who are not familiar with our program, we currently offer five semester courses to high school students. They are Introduction to Law, Business Law, 
criminal law, constitutional law, which is an honors level course, and this spring we will launch our capstone course, which is lawyering skills and advocacy, and that will also be honors level. Students may choose any one of these classes for elective credit, and those that complete four of the five courses in the program will receive a special designation on their high school diploma. We're also launching our first ever competitive mock trial team and a club to go along with it. And our team was actually just announced this week after we had tryouts prior to Thanksgiving. Uh, and I know you would be impressed by the raw talent represented in our team members. I'm very excited about the potential that we have. Competition for that begins in the 15th Judicial Circuit sometime late January. So you'll have to follow our progress throughout the school year to see how we do in our first year. Honestly, I could talk for hours about the program and all that we're doing in the classroom, the exciting things that we're learning, uh, but I'll be brief today. And what I really want you to know about our program, three special things. Uh, first, there's a natural constitutional theme running throughout our courses. Um, whether it be property rights in business law or rights of accused in criminal law, our students are exposed to the rights and freedoms of the U.S. Constitution. And for this reason, we're especially excited for the gift that we are receiving so that we can keep these themes alive in the hearts of our young people and particularly in the students in the pre-law program. The second special thing about our program is that we are a Christian pre-law program. And we are a Christian pre-law program more than in name only. We do explore legal issues from all types of intellectual angles, but our courses are taught from biblical principles and with a Christian worldview. To give you an idea of what this might look like in the classroom, we grapple with big questions in the pre-law program. Questions such as, why do we need laws in our society? What is God's view of justice? What does it mean to advocate for interests of other people? And to answer these questions, we look to the Bible itself. This is so important, and I really can't emphasize enough what a privilege it is for me to be able to teach law from a Christian point of view. Whether or not our students go on to pursue a career in the legal field, they are being exposed to society's issues and learning to grapple with them from God's point of view. It's my hope and prayer that as these students enter the professional realm, that they will make a positive impact for the kingdom of God, partly because of the seeds that we're planting in the classroom today. The third special thing about our program is our students. I'm beaming with pride. We have some of our students with us here today. And every day they're challenged to think outside the box. We tackle hands-on projects in the law classes uh, we negotiate settlements, we negotiate contracts, we arrest and interrogate one another in criminal law, and when our assignments are late, we file and argue a motion for extension of time. <laughs> we really do that. Uh, students do these projects with creativity and intellectual enthusiasm, and it's my privilege, really, to be part of the learning process along with them. Uh, today you'll have the opportunity to hear from two of our students about their experience in the program so far. First, you'll hear from Angela Laris. Angie is a junior and she's completing her second course in the program. And Angie was just named one of the lead attorneys for our mock trial team. In addition to being on the mock trial team, Angie is a member of the Future Business Leaders of America and also the Varsity Girls Lacrosse team. Angie has the heart of an advocate. And she's already expressed a desire to be trained by the Palm Beach County Youth Court System as a student attorney, where she will eventually represent an actual juvenile client during the sentencing proceedings. You'll also have an opportunity to hear from Matthew Simon. Matthew is a sophomore, and he is also finishing his second course in the program. Matthew is a member of the Mock Trial Club and the Varsity Lacrosse Team. Matthew is one of the leaders of our class discussions, and he's a very enthusiastic about the subject matter in the pre-law classes. And just to give you an example of that, um, our criminal law students were given an opportunity to participate in the Palm Beach County Youth Court this semester as a juror and decide a sentence for a real juvenile 
client. The same day that the, the opportunity was announced, Matthew went home, got his dress clothes, asked his parents to take him to the North County Courthouse, and he served that very evening as a juror so he could report back to the class about what he saw and what he learned. This type of enthusiasm drives our program, and I really wish you could all see what I get to see every day. It's, it's really fun, it's really energetic, it's creative, and the students are dedicated workers. So thank you again for being here today, for hearing a little bit about our program, for celebrating with us, and now please welcome me in joining Angie and Matthew. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Larez. As Mrs. Brown said, I'm a junior here at the King's Academy, and I've been here for three years. And I'm really super excited to be a part of the log program here and to have the opportunity to speak today. Uh, I began taking law classes my sophomore year when I first enrolled in Introduction to Law. When I first heard about this, I was ecstatic, really. I knew I kind of wanted to pursue law, but I didn't know for sure. And so, my sophomore year, I took the Intro to Law class, where we did a, a lot of exciting assignments and learned things such as what laws are, how we have them, and how we uphold them. We also covered alternate dispute resolutions and the trial process. At the end of the semester, we did a mock trial within the class where every student had the opportunity to play a role. I signed up for one of the roles as the defense attorney, where I participated in cross-examining one of the witnesses which I personally really enjoyed. <laughs> this year, I'm currently enrolled in the criminal law class, which I've been loving every single minute of. Since the beginning of the year, we've covered types of crime, the dual system, the court, the, the court system, the sources of rights, the differences between the juvenile and adult system, the process that policemen have to go through before making an arrest, and Miranda Wright, the exclusionary rule. We've gone into depth with the trial process and specifically covered sentencing. And right now, we, we're touching on the criminal mind, and we're looking forward to going to forensics. One thing that we did in this class that I plan on pursuing further, as Mrs. Brown uh, said before, is attending youth court as a juror. I've been once with the class, and I plan on going two more times before being able to participate as an attorney and actually uh, advocate for a juvenile. Uh, one, no, sorry. Currently, I plan on taking business law next semester and finishing off my senior year by taking constitutional law and oral written advocacy. After graduating my senior year, I aspired to attend Florida State University and undergrad in communications to then pursue a law degree at Florida State University College of Law, hopefully then being able to pursue a career as a criminal defense attorney. I'm really grateful for this program and how much I've expanded my knowledge in the law system and by taking these two courses, I've been made 110% sure that this is what I want to do. Thank you so much for coming. Good morning. Before I begin my speech, I would like to thank um, each and every one of you for coming to the King's Academy of Law Announcement Ceremony. Uh, this morning, I'll be speaking to you about my personal journey before and through the law program here at King's. Um, having a dad as a lawyer, I grew up listening to case stories in my dad's office. Hearing these stories made, seeming, made being a lawyer seem like the best job in the world. That is, until I got tall enough to see all the paperwork on this case. <laughs> as I grew older, I began to realize that there's much more to being a lawyer than funny trial stories. But this didn't discourage me. I've known for quite some time that I wanted to pursue law. And when I arrived at King's in ninth grade, I saw that they had an entire law program, and I couldn't think of a better place to start. I began taking pre-law my first semester at King's, and after meeting Ms. Brown and all the students in her class, I knew I was going to enjoy the course. This enjoyment lasted the entire span of my pre-law class, as we not only learned the foundations of being a good lawyer, but everything involved in law. Being served as summons during my English class, Setting our, our own mock trial and watching 12 Angry Men were not only the highlights of my law class, but my entire freshman year. 
When I was told about the four other classes provided in the law program, signing up for criminal law my sophomore year was one of the easiest decisions that I've ever made. I was, with more drive than ever to become a lawyer, I was more than excited to see everything that the law program at Kings had to offer. Criminal law has been no exception to the outstanding quality of Ms. Brown's classes. Almost at completion, I've learned more about criminal procedures as a lawyer and all the details behind a crime than I could have imagined going into the class. Not only was I blessed enough to sit as a juror on a juvenile court hearing, but later this afternoon, I will be able to take a jail tour to get even further knowledge about the criminal justice system. Looking back on the two classes of the King's Academy of Law program I've enrolled in, I have nothing bad to say. My knowledge about the justice system and what being a lawyer entails has grown tenfold, and my passion to become a lawyer has only risen. I will no doubt be finishing all five classes in this program, and am beyond excited to see what each one has to teach me. I'd like to thank you all once more for coming here today, and for allowing me to speak on my experiences in the law program. That was certainly a wonderful showcase of the phenomenal talent that we get to see walk through the halls of the King's Academy each and every day. Matter of fact, yesterday I was privileged to be able to accompany a group of the students as they went to the courthouse downtown, as they went to Gunster Law, and I was reminded again what called me to education at the King's Academy long ago. It's students that have a passion for education, they have a passion for the Lord, and they certainly want to reflect excellence in each and everything they're involved in at the King's Academy. And my name is Doug Rains, and I'm the headmaster here at the school, and that means that I'm the chief academic officer of sorts, and one of the blessings of that job is to be able to work with what I consider the finest group of administrators and faculty around. And so when I had the chance last year to meet with Mrs. Brown, I immediately realized that she had the components of the educator that we want all of our children to be able to work with. It reminded me of what we've wrote about and talked about a lot at the King's Academy, and that is that our faculty are the living curriculum. They are the ones that are making a difference each and every day and spend many times far more time than parents get to with their children. So Mrs. Brown put in that dedication from the beginning. And it also reminded me of the saying, where God guides, he will provide. And he certainly has done that each and every step along the journey. She worked so very faithfully so that when this opportunity to be able to have funding for our program presented, we were proud. We were teeming with joy to say, we have developed this, and it really was on the hard work of Mrs. Brown. Randy also mentioned the administrative team, and I just want to commend, I had the great opportunity to be administrator in the high school office many years ago, and I was instrumental in bringing Mrs. Jones in to be an administrator during those days, and she became our principal, and she has been so determined from her first days as our high school principal to see these tracks thrive. Many times she continues to, what I might say even pester at times, Randy and I, to be able to get some of these programs, but they have yielded tremendous results. So I commend her for her persistence, for her commitment, for her passion. And so again, thank you all so very much for believing in the King's Academy. It is the finest school that we could possibly have our children attend, and I know God's going to continue to bless the work that we do here. This morning I have the opportunity to introduce three wonderful speakers that God has provided and they've graciously agreed to come to share with us. First I get the opportunity to introduce to you David Namo. Mr. Namo has served as the Executive Director of the Family Research Council Action where he worked on political issues, interfaced with Congress, and met candidates from across the country. David has served as an executive director and CEO of Christian Legal Society since 2012. His prior employment at the Christian Legal Society was as the former director of attorney and law study ministries of Christian Legal Society, acting as the director of communications and publishing the Christian Lawyer magazine. David has consulted on trademark and business contract law, as well as with the Defense Intelligence Agency. He has been interviewed widely by national and international media sources, including NBC Nightly News, Fox News, the Associated Press, CBN News, as well as various radio stations across the country and around the globe. David attended both George Mason University School of Law 
and Chicago Kent College of Law. David resides in Northern Virginia with Laura, his wife, a patent attorney. There's six children, and I like to hear his cat and his St. Bernard dog. Next, after David speaks to us, we have the great opportunity to hear from Saya Baker Barnes, a shareholder at Searcy, Denny, Scarola, Barnhart, and Shipley. I always like saying that. <laughs> a Florida native, she served former Governor Lawton Child as an intern in the Executive Office of Communications. Her legal practice focuses on personal injury, medical negligence, and product liability cases. She has achieved many multi-dollar dollar verdicts and settlements, including her most recent settlement of $20 million against the tobacco giant R.J. Reynolds. Mrs. Baker Barnes is the current president of the Palm Beach Bar Association, the first African-American female to serve in this role. And her theme for the 2017-18 year, which was just terrific, you've been served. Lawyers answering the summons to community service. The program is designed to emphasize the importance of community service and her own involvement in the community is really stellar. Some of that includes Inlet Grove Community High School, the Lynx, and Scott Hawkins Leadership Institute. Mrs. Baker Barnes received her law degree from Florida State University College of Law. We heard some aspiring for that. She also went on to receive, or she also received her communication degree at Florida State. She resides in West Palm Beach and with her husband and her wonderful children, uh, three of them who attend the King's Academy. So we're so thankful you're going to share with us today. Lastly, I'd like to share with you that Mr. Scott Hawkins has agreed to come and close out our program. He is the vice chair of Jones Foster and past president of the Florida Bar. He is the Florida Bar Board Certified Attorney in Business Litigation and practices commercial and corporate litigation with an emphasis on intellectual property trade secret disputes, covenants not to compete, securities, and real estate litigation. I'm learning a lot about all of those just by sitting in Mrs. Jones, uh, Mrs. Brown's classes. He also has significant civil and administrative litigation experience in areas involving environmental and land disputes. His clients include technology companies, major property landowners, and insurance companies. Mr. Hawkins graduated with honors from the University of Florida with a degree in economics. He went on to earn his Juris Doctorate from the University of Florida, and then he went to go on to graduate with a Master's in Business Administration from the University of Edinburgh. Mr. Hawkins is the Chair of the University of Florida's Law School Board. He is the 2016 recipient of the Palm Beach County Bar Association's Judge Edward Rogers Diversity Award, and the 2014 recipient of the Palm Beach County Bar Association's Sydney A. Stubbs Professionalism Award. Mr. Hawkins truly has a resume that would take all day to read, um, but one of the things that I know he's most proud of, and that is he's the father of Allison Hawkins, who I had the pleasure to teach many years ago, and she was one of our stellar students. So he will conclude our program this morning. So at this time, would you welcome Mr. Nalmo to speak to us? Thank you. It's wonderful being here. I've been told I only have three or four minutes and so, <clears throat> thankfully it's not 34 minutes. Uh, I do wanna give uh, a special thanks to the school, to, to Denise Brown, for the invitation. I'm from Washington, D.C., and <clears throat> I'm in Florida, so I probably should drink water in the middle of my talk. Isn't that what you guys do? <laughs> um, it just happened to be providential that I was here in the area. Uh, and got the invitation. I said, all right, Lord, if I'm supposed to go see the King's Academy, a school that I had never heard of before, so I apologize, and have had the opportunity to look at and, and, and uh, research a little bit, what a blessing this school is. So it's great to be here today. I do want to thank both students. One who did her entire talk on her tiptoes, which was very impressive. I do want to give you greetings from the Christian legal community from coast to coast, and even around the world. Christian lawyers practicing law in all types of, of, of uh, in all areas of law. Those standing uh, and prosecuting those accused of crimes. Those standing in defense of those who have been accused of crimes. Those doing commercial litigation. Those doing trademark law, patent law, right? Every type of law. Usually when people think of Christian lawyers, the first thing they think of me is Jay Secular. And, uh, that's one very small piece of what some Christian lawyers do, but there aren't many doing that. Most Christian lawyers are working very hard to protect people 
Like uh, the, the woman that works for me got out of an uh, estate law practice and she was helping women and men protect their estates, right? Or take care of their families after they pass. So Christian lawyers, it's important that we protect those with integrity, right? When we write good contracts, when we protect people's interests, and we do it with a sense of integrity and professionalism, we change lives, right? When people do things that are sloppy, and every new lawyer in the room knows what a sloppy lawyer looks like, families and relationships and people are hurt. So I give you greetings from Christian lawyers all over the country. I give you greetings from Christian judges, those sitting on benches, that are called to that special position to bring justice, right? To decide, to be Solomon in cases that they often don't and can't understand. Um, I give you greetings from Christian law students from over 150 law school campuses across this country. And those of you, you may not have talked to them about the CLS and Martinez case. In some of those campuses, it's hard for these Christian groups to even exist. But I gotta tell you, they're the greatest group of students that I know, Christian law students, that stand firm for the gospel of Jesus Christ and are the salt light of Jesus on their campuses, where on law school campuses there are no others like them. <clears throat> I give you greetings from poverty lawyers, from all the Christian legal aid clinics across this country, those making very little money, uh, not the big, big money, right, that, that you guys make here in the front row, but those <laughs> making very, yeah, I know, they're shaking their heads. I know how little they make. Um, but those really sacrificing to help the poor and the needy, believe it or not, the poor and the needy need lawyers, right? Those trying to figure out veterans' benefits and uh, victims of domestic violence. And those, for example, in Houston, those trying to deal with insurance companies that don't think their houses have been flooded over should be covered. Uh, I used to do, I worked for a personal injury firm, and so I do not have any special liking for insurance companies. Um, I bring you greetings from Christian mediators. CLS started Christian conciliation back in the 80s because we know that we as Christians shouldn't be taking each other to court, right? So we started Christian conciliation, which became Peacemaker Ministries, helping, actually they've, they've saved more marriages, they've saved more companies, they've saved more churches and more ministries when people don't know how to deal with conflict. But lawyers that understand biblical principles and can take that and help folks come together is an incredible miracle. Uh, it's just hard to understand. So I just bring you greetings from all the Christians in all the walks and areas of the law, Christian professors, and I can go on and on. But I want to wrap up my thoughts here today. As you talk about these lofty principles, but I'll also remember, you know, the students are going to learn fun things like what is a tort, right, and commercial litigation, and, and contributory negligence. Maybe you're not going to teach them that because you love them. And, uh, and comparative negligence and horrible things like that. Let's remember the small passage in the Bible where a lawyer in his arrogance stood up to challenge the God of the universe, right? So a lawyer stood to test Jesus Christ. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus looked at him and said, what does the law, what do the prophets say? And the lawyer, knowing the answer, and he knew it anyway, said that I should love the Lord my God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love my neighbors myself. And Jesus said, you've answered correctly. And the lawyer answered, well, who is my neighbor? And I think the lawyer asked that because he wanted to know who don't I have to love? And Jesus then went into the parable of the Good Samaritan, right? Somebody had fallen, you know, the robbers had fallen upon him uh, on the road to Jericho. A priest had walked by and walked to the other side. A Levite had walked by and walked to the other side. And the Samaritan, one of the underclass of Israel at the time, <coughs> bound his wounds up, put him on his donkey, took him to the inn, paid for his board and room, and told the innkeeper, I'll take care of any bills that surpass the money I've given you. And Jesus then looked at this guy and says, this lawyer, and says, all right, who was the neighbor to this person? And the lawyer said, well, the Samaritan. He said, well, then go and do likewise. And why we had to explain that to a lawyer that knew the law and knew the principles of loving your neighbor is indicative of many in our profession. So to the students I'm speaking now, and hopefully not to the lawyers, remember that you have a role and the law has a role in God's redemptive nature in this society. And figure out what that is. God does have a plan for you. He does have a plan for this society. And his plan is redemption. And he's already won this this, this battle. 
But in the meantime, right, before the end comes, we all have a role. And figure out what that is. Figure out how you are supposed to love your neighbor. Love the one who you don't want to love. And lawyers too often forget that. We too often get caught up in rules. We too often get caught up. And we are supposed to win. We are supposed to be zealous advocates. But we often forget that loving our neighbor is sometimes a bigger, bigger project of God in both in our lives and the lives of our clients. I will leave you with one last thought that is not mine because uh, he's way smarter than I am. William Wilberforce, as he spoke of his country, because your goal here, as I read, is to think about liberty and justice as this country was founded. Wilberforce also dealt with very difficult times when they were dealing with issues that were just as hard as the issues we deal with today. And he said, my only solid hopes for the well-being of my country depend not so much on her navies and armies, not so much on the wisdom of her rulers or the spirit of her people, as on the persuasion that she still contains many who in a degenerate age love and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. On the humble trust that the intercession of these may still be prevalent, that for the sake of these, heaven may still look upon us with an eye of favor. As Christians, parents, students, free law students, lawyers, may, ask, may we always remember that God needs us to pray and to intercede and to remember that we are his agents of righteousness in this culture and this society. Thank you. Good morning. I'm really excited to be here today and I want to thank you all for having me and inviting me to be a, a part of this very special program. I'm Saya Baker Barnes. My husband, Eva Barnes, is here. We're excited because we have three children here at the King's Academy. Celia is in fourth grade, Emery is in kindergarten, and my little boy Eden, who is three, is at the preschool in Royal Palm Beach. So we have a very busy household. Um, but we also feel very blessed that our children have the opportunity to have such a wonderful education here, such a wonderful, loving Christian environment here. And one big part of King's Academy that we love is the element of exposure. And that is exposure to many different backgrounds, exposure to many different programs, including this amazing pre-law program, and just the opportunity to learn about all that our country has to offer them um, from the perspective of education, from the perspective of their careers, and from the perspective of ultimately what they give back to our community. So um, I'm excited to be here today as a parent of children at King's Academy, and also as the president of the Palm Beach County Bar Association. We have an organization that is made up of nearly 3,000 lawyers here in Palm Beach County from all practice areas, and we're excited to see programs like this. Because one of the things that we found as lawyers, and I, it was, someone spoke about it earlier today, the political climate, and just the perspective that our children are getting from what they see on TV and what they hear in our community, and it's not necessarily the perspective that we want them to have, because the law and our legal system is so important and it's such a significant system and it's such a good system but they don't really necessarily get to hear about all those good parts so this is an awesome opportunity for them to learn about our legal system at the bar association through our youth and serve program that's one of the initiatives that we've been working on this year so our law related education committee found that we really needed as lawyers to try to reach out more to the community, to our schools, to give some education about what we as lawyers really do, the rights that we really preserve, and the, really the noble role that we play in our society. We are counselors, we provide guidance, we protect rights, and we're enforcers of rights in our community. And without that, our community would fall apart. So, one of the programs that we did recently at the bar that I'd like to tell you about that I hope that we're able to, to bring here, um, we took a group of students, it was about 25 students, to a naturalization ceremony at the federal courthouse. Before they attended, they studied and prepared for the naturalization examination that you have to take in order to become a citizen. Because what we found is that there were a number of studies that, that you know, we talk about being Americans and what does being American really mean? And, and, and so they had a group of folks take the test and, and only about 30% of them could pass the test. 
And so we really wanted the students to know this is what you have to, this is what our country is all about. And this is what you need to know in order to become a citizen. And so they studied for the exam, they took the exam, and then they attended the ceremony. And they read the national, um, they, they did the Pledge of Allegiance, they read the preamble to the Constitution, they sung the national anthem, they read letters of support to the new citizens that were just sworn in as, um, as citizens of our country. And it gave them such a perspective about the importance of our legal system, the significance of our legal system, and the role that they can play, not just as lawyers, but as active participants in our society. So at the Bar Association, we are emphasizing education. I'm very proud that the King's Academy is emphasizing Christian education in this pre-law program, and we're very excited to be a part of it, and we look forward to its great success. Thank you very much. Good morning. I want to really thank the King's Academy for this incredible opportunity to be part of this program to discuss an extremely important program that you've had the vision and the audacity frankly, to launch at a time when it's desperately needed in our culture. First, I want to thank David for his very clear, resolute voice and helping to frame some important issues about the greater role that lawyers, and I speak to the young people, have in our culture, Angela, Angela and Matthew and Daniel. What David said is very true. I want to thank Saya for her words, but even more importantly, I want to thank Saya for her model. Saya is a model of courage, character, and commitment. She has a clear, strong voice. And I urge all young people to look at Saya as a model of leadership potential that she's got on display today. But as you think about your role at this, at this program, I'm not speaking to these young folks right here, I see this program as a future laboratory for the formation and development of leaders. Uh, one of the untold messages in connection with the program and the study of law is that lawyers become leaders in the lives of their clients and in the various organizations they serve. Obviously, David's a leader where he is at the CLS, which is having a profound impact on lawyers. But we get called upon to help provide leadership in all sorts of situations every day, where integrity and character is absolutely core to fulfilling our mission with excellence and to achieving total justice. What Mike Simon does every day or Bill Hennessy, you don't think about it as leadership, but when they tell their clients, I think this is the better way to go, that's a form of leadership. But nobody ever talks about that. But if you come out of this program, young students, thinking that way, it will affect your life and your future clients and the churches and the organizations that you serve in profound ways that will make your headmaster extremely proud. So I've just gone off topic. But may it please the court, Judge Harper, thank you for making the effort to be here. I want to be, I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to try to be brief. So my pastor tells me that confession is good for the soul. Do I have your attention? I have to confess that when I heard about this program, Randy, Headmaster Reigns, I wasn't completely sold. I come from the perspective, and I'll confess, that the best preparation for the study of law is a broad classical education with a strong emphasis, Chairman McStraw, on critical reasoning and writing. So I'm thinking, does it make sense to take you know, 16, 17 year olds and channel them for a free law program? Okay, Randy, did you just do that too? It's been the story of my life. It used to happen on dates. Okay, we're done. So then I was invited by Bill and Mike uh, and David Dreyer to come to the Gunster Conference Room. And I had a chance to hear the vision from Denise Brown and uh, Doug Reigns, our headmaster. And they outlined the vision, they emphasized what really is important, critical reasoning, critical thinking, and writing. And I said to myself, you know, had I had this chance, 
when I was 15, I would have jumped on it. Never had this chance. But then I started to think about the king's motto. The king's motto is, in part, to train up a child from Proverbs, to train up a child in the way he or she should go. And when they are older, they shall not depart from it, right? And we, we think that has one particular meaning. It does, but it actually has several meanings. One meaning that my pastor emphasizes that's not emphasized enough, in my opinion, is that part of our duty as parents and as the culture agents of parents, coaches, teachers, assistants in classes, administrators, is to help your child find their giftedness, find their passion, realize their special equipment for, for their role in life. Maybe for Matthew, he's going to be an advocate, or Angie, she's going to be a defense lawyer. Or maybe some poor guy out there like Hawkins is going to be resolving corporate transactions like I did until 3 a.m. this morning in Miami last night, so I'm tired. But so a part of our job is to help our children find their giftedness and to realize they've been equipped for a special role. So when you train up a child, it's not just about discipline. It's about learning what God wants them to become. And I think the King's Academy, frankly, excels at that. And I say that from first-hand experience. Having watched my daughter thrive here, she told me my daughter did phenomenally well in college. Amazingly well in college. It's amazingly well in graduate school. She was prepared for those roles. She told me just the last two weeks ago, three weeks ago, that Headmaster Reigns was one of the best teachers she had in her entire life. She has studied with some wonderful people. She said that. That happens here. I think the King's Academy and your wonderful Forest Headmaster Reigns, you excel at helping young people find their way. And I think that's one of our biggest challenges as, uh, as parents and those who are in a position to help influence, right? Sometimes, you know, a high school kid's going to listen to uh, the parent of a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a coach more than listen to a parent. We all are in this community together, right? But I really firmly believe that. So as I reflect on this opportunity you have, I'm reminded of some teachers who nudged me along. In eighth grade, Angie, I actually had a teacher who told me I was going to be the prosecuting attorney in a trial in civics that went for an entire week. And, and my fellow classmates didn't like it when I cross-examined them on the case of the missing homework. Now, why Mr. Persons, this ardent Baptist, asked me to do that, I have no idea. I don't recall how it happened, but it happened. That's what's so interesting, it happened. Later in high school, Mr. Gibbons, a very devout Methodist, pushed me to improve my writing ability and my critical reasoning ability. And Mrs. Bittner, an ardent Presbyterian, pushed me to read the broad readings of Plato in the early discussion about law. And the point I'm trying to say is, these folks helped to train me up to appreciate I had an interest in this, and I had some equipment to fulfill a desire. And so perhaps through this great program, that's going to be resonating in your individual lives with Matthew and Angie and Daniel and many, many others. So I applaud the program because I think it's going to bring a focus to helping these kids find their way. I want to shift to, from a personal observation to a biblical observation that I frankly think does not get recognized enough. How many realize that the Apostle Paul was actually trained in the law? The Apostle Paul was trained to be an extraordinary lawyer. Hardly anybody ever says that. He had the finest legal education then available. He was an elite scholar of the law. Now, we know Apostle Paul was an ardent persecutor of Christians. I'm certainly not applauding that. But then we know, when you leave that out, but then we know about the road to Damascus and this extraordinary conversion experience. And we also know that Paul went off to become an ardent preacher of the gospel and wrote nearly one half of the New Testament. Now, if you want to appreciate critical reasoning, read Romans 8. Do you think that, that it was providential, that that legal training, Angie and Matthew and Daniel, that legal training was harnessed to become the most perhaps 
significant evangelist in the history of Christianity? It's an interesting fact, isn't it? And we don't, we hope, hardly ever talk about it. My large point is this. The study of law will equip you to have an impact as leaders in ways that your teachers will not be able to predict today in this massively accelerated culture we live in today. And I applaud the King's Academy for taking the bold initiative to not only launch the program, but with the goal of emphasizing freedom and liberty, the responsibility that comes with freedom and liberty, appreciating that our culture and our economy, and our, frankly, our democracy, uh, is made strong through the rule of law. People don't talk about that enough. But we are a law, of, we are a nation of laws, governed by laws, and not the whimsy of men. And when there's a power transition in the United States, it's not the product of tanks on the streets, as you see across our world. It is the product of elections. Not always happy ones, but elections. It's the product of the rule of law. So if you graduate young people that come to appreciate that, and those young people one day can say in our church, hey, you don't like this necessarily? Well, get elected or pass your own bill. But the rule of law is something that's sacrosanct, and we should celebrate it. The rule of law is manifested in uh, what our framers thought was important, the right to own property, that all men and women shall be treated equally, that contracts shall be enforced equally despite creed, nationality, race. Those are bedrock to the core values of our founders, and they're bedrock to the whole issue of celebrating freedom and liberty as emphasized in the Christian legal program, pre-law program at Kansas. I applaud what you're doing here, Denise, and your vision, Doug and Master Reigns and Randy, and Chairman Mixroff. I appreciate very much the opportunity to share my views. I um, just wish to close. Many, many years ago, uh, a lawyer emphasized to me the very powerful words of Micah. And what does the prophet, the Jewish prophet, Micah? And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly. That's a good value to emphasize in our culture with your God. I pray that these words will guide your teachings and ennoble you to be excellent in your efforts. And may your students, Matthew, Angie, Danielle, go forth and be salt and light in our world with a special appreciation for all. And may God anoint this program that we add his richest blessing on the King's Academy and its Christian community. Thank you, David, Say it. Scott, all of you. Thank you for coming today. This has been uh, a great experience. I have learned. I was making notes over here as I was listening. So thank you so much for imparting your wisdom. We are going to break up, take some photos up here at the front. As we do, I'd encourage you to network in the back. There's food, there's drink, there's coffee. Um, please take advantage of that. Meet somebody you don't know. Students, if you'd stay close, we're going to have you come up and get some photos with our speakers. We're going to let them get some photos first uh, so that they can go on to their other um, appointments for the day. But the rest of you, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. And we praise God for all that he is doing at Kings Academy. Thank you so much for being here. Today.